There are a lot of settings in MLB The Show 22 that you need to make sure you have set right. As someone who's played this game for a few years now on Diamond Dynasty, but for years since MLB The Show 06, I know a good gist of what these settings are, what works best in the game, and overall the things that you should know about each setting before you hop on in and play. So let's go on into our settings. Go through my recommendations, what I think you should do, and give you some tips and what you should be choosing for yourselves. My settings may not work for you, but I want to help explain why each setting is the way it is to help you make your own decision as well. First of all, if you're having issues getting settings to set, make sure you go into the main menu and set your setting. Make sure you go in the menu when you are making the big changes after the games. So in our general settings here, first we have our hitting settings. I cover these in more detail in my hitting tips video, but I like strike zone two. I suggest strike zone one or strike zone high for hitting. This is up to you, but I like the more zoomed in cameras. Your in offense play view is just the camera that you get after you hit the ball. I like dynamic for that. I use zone is my hitting interface. I think it's the most rewarding user input based interface. I really recommend using this, especially if you are playing online, just learn it and practice it. It'll help you a ton and set that input mode to button. So all you have to do is hit the button to swing not flick the stick. Also give a try to PCI anchoring, leave this setting on and all you have to do is click the left stick in and point in a direction. It'll start your PCI in a dedicated spot. And I would recommend leaving your plate coverage indicator on. And this is what I use for my PCI right now. If you just want to copy it, it's a very nice PCI for hall of fame and legend difficulty, especially where those PCIs are normally smaller. And then in your advanced hitting settings, you do have a few options I do want to cover here. Guest pitch really doesn't matter in online play, but the base running interface. Some people like classic, some people like default. If you have issues with your left stick, maybe you're trying to point the left stick at a runner to control them individually and you're having a tough time doing that, consider going into classic. I will say you should mess around in custom practice or offline modes and test it before you make a final decision. But I like default. I think it does more than enough for me. Then in our pitching, I would really recommend pinpoint pitching. It's the most rewarding pitcher input. It might be a little bit tough to learn, but the more reps, the more you practice and play with it, the more rewarded you will be. And especially at the start of the year, you can get away with kind of learning it because there's also a lot of people who are also learning it. It's going to be the most rewarding for you. It's worth practicing. Once you get pinpoint down, it is the way to go for pitching, no doubt about it. Make sure you leave your pitch feedback on as well. I like the pitch and strike zone because it's more zoomed to my pitcher and I'm getting the hitter's perspective. This is all personal preference, but I like to see the pitcher's motion. Thus, I use strike zone. Also, leave your pitch trail on, whether you use pitch trail or classic. I like pitch trail. Shows the path of the ball moves and really helps me choose the right pitches and tunnel my pitches, which I will actually go into further detail on my pitching tips video. And then your fielding settings. I would use button accuracy. This is the way to go. Buttons, it's basically all reliant on your player's throwing accuracy ratings and it's random. Button accuracy, it is all down to you. It may take a few bad throws to get a grip of it, but button accuracy is going to be the way to go. Once you get a grasp of button accuracy, it's very tough to not green a throw. There was a challenge in the mode mini season seasons where you have to commit three errors in a game and I was literally struggling to commit errors. It was bad. Make sure you have the throw meter on so you could see if you turn off no feedback, then it actually turns off the little Chevron thing that it has if that is something you want to do as well. I would turn your in play view defense to a high enough camera so you could see the fielders. I found issues with using dynamic in the years past it was so low to the ground, I had a tough time seeing where the ball was going in the direction of it. So I recommend medium or high. High actually might be a good one this year because they changed medium to be even closer to the ground. Make sure you have throw canceling on as well. If you get into a pickle in the base pass, you need to be able to cancel your throws. Or if you just mess up a throw, you need to be able to cancel it and save an error. This is the way to go. Leave that on. All you have to do is hit the button the second time and it'll cancel the throw. And then finally for the fielding catch indicators. Drifting ball is the classic white ball circle and it moves and you get underneath the ball. This is very straightforward for catching fly balls. Then there's the track ball which shows the blue bar and it shows the ball trail and you basically have to line the bar up with where the ball is going to catch the ball. And this one is good too, but I don't like the look of it. Like I don't like seeing that ball trail. So I like using drifting ball. But again, this is up to you. There's no real wrong answer and personal preference. And I would recommend once you are solid at the game, getting a good gist of it, turn the shift off and control it yourself. As when you're playing good players, feel like the shift being off is more valuable to you and being able to control it yourself. 
There's a lot of times I forget about the shift. Players will beat the shift on a, a little blooper to left field and you hate to see that. And in terms of your other settings, presentation, there is nothing really beneficial to you. Your sound effects, again, nothing here as well in your audio video settings. If you are on a console that for some reason has some video settings, I would recommend playing the smoother gameplay experience. Make sure the game plays smoothly and you get a smooth output, especially if you're trying to play the game on like Diamond Dynasty at a somewhat competitive level. And then your mode specific settings. Again, this is really up to you. Nothing crazy here. I think you might be able to change these settings based on how you want to play Road to the Show and stuff. So that is it for my overall settings and then will be the show 22. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like if you did. And I do have a whole bunch of other tips in the channel if you are just hopping in looking for how to get better. So make sure you're subbed and checking out the other videos on the channel like my hitting tips video in case you have not seen that before. But I appreciate you all watching. You have a great rest of your day. See you all again on next one. Deuces.